Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to our talk. My name is Austin, or Dalhek Bandler. Uh, we are Native Planet, and today we are going to talk to you about self-hosting maximalism and try to convert some of you guys to maxis. Um, and then we'll talk about what we do, why we do it, and uh, what we're working on. Um, so first of all, let's talk about self-hosting your own data. Self-hosting your data ensures greater control, privacy, and security over your digital assets. We're talking about your private messages, uh, photos to your family, and eventually your health records. Self-hosting reduces reliance on third-party providers, safeguards against data breaches, censorship, and generally a loss of access. The problem with this right now is that the current state of personal OS hosting is fucked for four big reasons. One, centralized hosting providers have access to your data. They can be coerced into spying on you, shutting down, your, shutting down or turning your data over to authorities, or keeping your keys hostage. If you host things yourself on AWS or DigitalOcean, you're dealing with the same problem. You have no real ownership of your data. Your other option is hosting yourself. The problem is setting up your own hosting equipment, the hardware, the software is a total pain in the ass. And even if you do figure out self-hosting, you're going to be hosting from home, which makes your physical location and therefore your identity public knowledge. These are all massive problems that exist right now today, and particularly with Urbit. Well, the good news is yeah, we've solved all of these problems for you. Yes. I'm going to turn this over to Amalful Winrux. Nice. And uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so hello. So how, how have we? How have we solved this for you? Well, we come from this from multiple angles. The first is our GroundSeg software. This is the hosting platform that comes with our boxes, makes it stupid easy to uh, boot a new ship, maintain it, and even just apply updates and such. We, um, we've updated it. So you'll see, I think we're pushing out an update after assembly. And you'll see some screenshots, but you'll see GroundSec 2. This has some advanced capabilities utilizing the new vein we wrote called Lick to let you control your hardware remotely through your Urbit, as well as extra goodies that we'll get to. Um, yeah, we're also working on remote backups and basically how do you save yourself from breaches. This is an ongoing process. Hopefully, uh, GroundSec 2 will get there. Some screenshots. Uh, much, different, much better design, um, more intuitive, very dashboard-esque. Uh, big fans of it. Um, makes it a lot easier to kind of see your whole system, know what you're dealing with. You can host your friends. I think on our Aurora, we have something like 10 plus ships can be hosted, so you can host your HOA community. <laughs> um, and again, we give you insight into the computer, computer itself, so you know when you're running out of resources, you know if you need to deal with RAM issues, if you need to deal with uh, errors and stuff. Most of them are handled for you, but sometimes having an insight is useful. This solves the onboarding problem, right? This makes it trivial to plug in our box, sign in on your Wi-Fi, set your password, and just get up and running, simpler than a Chromecast. The other issue is this data, the, sorry, the networking issue. We've built StarTram, which is our first, v, which is Urbit's first VPN. What this does is it bridges the gap from your home network into the cloud, gives you an externally accessible address that you can go and view your your orbit from. This protects your, your private IP. It gives you like a VPN access, as well as allows you, oh, sorry, as well as lets you uh, view data hidden behind your uh, network's router. This helps with, uh, this is just what you need to, for orbit to be on the go, right? This is the benefit that centralized hosting actually gives you. Well, you can do this at home. Uh, everything is secure and privatized, so we can't see the data going through. We just know something's connected, and what, what can we do? Um, we have multi-region support, so we have servers, I think, in four regions. So if you're in the, anywhere in the world, you have fast access to it. One of the big benefits of self-hosting, and one thing that we have been leaning towards, is the ability to sidecar uh, Web2 applications on your device. So the the big one we, we kind of released with last year is Minio, which is your S3 storage. It just lets you share images, big files and stuff through Urbit as links. 
This, we use this regularly for like hosting apps, hosting videos and stuff, and, and even AP, and even like ISOs for different things. The one we're announcing this year is PenPy, which is a self-hosted um, LLM that's running on your native Planet Box that you can interface with through Urbit. Uh, we would have a demo for it, but Murphy and all his friends came, um, and that, that stopped working. Um, <laughs> In the future, uh, we hope to have things like turn servers and uh, possible mining, mining improvers for future blockchains, urban adjacent. You have to go see the Zorb talk tomorrow for more on that. Um, but one of the benefits of self-hosting is you don't have to worry about the scaling issue that hosting providers have to deal with. If I'm, if I'm trying to host 1,000 people, it's a much different problem than I'm hosting three or four. Hosting three or four lets you iterate and not worry about these performance overheads and let's, lets us add features to this software suite much simpler and much, uh, much more tightly wound within Urbit. Uh, which brings us into PenPy. PenPy is Urbit's first self-hosted AI. This runs as a sidecar, so this does not run in knock. We're not that dumb. But it lets, <laughs> it lets you run it on hardware you own. You can ask it questions that are personal to you that no one else can really get into. You can tell it to be as racist as you want. It's great. <laughs> um, it's built with end-to-end -end encryption, so any data you send into it is staying in it. You can't have a man-in-the-middle attack or anything. And it, uh, you, get to get, you get to decide where your data lives, how it's used, and what experience you want it to have. It's called PenPy because it's a slow app um, we don't have GPUs on our boxes, so it takes, it's about eight words a second. So it's a pen pal, not a chatbot. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that solves the so software issue, right? Like, what does, like, how do you onboard it? What's nice is our software can be run on any old hardware. We have our self-hosting manifesto out that tells you how to build your own computer. Teaches you how to do it, teaches you why you want to do it. So we're here to sell you hardware, though. So why is ours better? Well, we want it to be a toaster. We want it to be something you use daily that looks nice in your house that you can put on display. We want it to have a variety of capabilities and price points so you can access it, so anyone can have access to it, right? You don't need to buy a $1,000 server. And then we also want, uh, it, like I said, to look nice. So we have custom folded aluminum enclosures along with a variety of what I think are great colors. Red is the best. Um, we can have that discussion. So. How did we solve this? Last year at Assembly, we announced the, uh, we launched our Tellurian One, which are a flagship, uh, flagship product, as well as our privacy-oriented Aurora. Um, these have been doing great. We have what, like, I don't even know. People are running these regularly. I think I've run my ship on it for months. We run our star on it. You can join us at native, TVY. Um, but anyways. Uh, these work great. I think you can still buy these. They're fantastic. But this year, we're announcing two other products at um, similar price points. The Tellurian 2, which is a smaller, more reliable version of the Tellurian, and the Callisto, the highly portable Callisto. It's pretty small. You can fit it in your pocket. So we'll jump to the Tellurian 2. So like I said, improved, compact, more reliable than our first gen. Um, it's fanless, so you have minimal moving parts, which is very nice. Um, and again, we have the starting price point of 550. The follow-up to that is the Callisto. Um, much cheaper price point, 225, along with, um, yeah, small size. You can power it from a, like a USB battery pack, and you can have like a Wi-Fi, like a 4G card, and you, you're mobile, or even Starlink. Um, it's, it's not as powerful as our other boxes, but I think you can still host like two or three different Urbits along with sidecars. LLM would be eh, but it'll be fun to try it. And again, also passively cooled. Um, yeah, I guess this is a short presentation. So I guess the takeaway we want to give you guys is to stop creating excuses, host your own data, and uh, enjoy, our, and try and find our self-hosting manifesto if you can. You can go to improvisedcomputationalmunitions.io to get, all, <laughs> to get all your stuff. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll take questions. Yeah, we wanted yeah. to. Yeah, this is more fun. Very fast presentation. I love it.
Yeah, we wanted to keep that short and snappy because we have more fun doing Q&A with you guys than just standing up here and talking about what we do. So we're going to open it up to Q&A. Yes, how fun. So you're coming from behind you. The cases for your boxes, yes. are they bulletproof? <laughs> no, they're aluminum, so I'm sure you can shoot through them. Yeah. There's not really a use case for it. Actually, uh, we'll talk about that later. I have a fun story about that. Yeah. <laughs> we were approached with somebody that wanted to make a Kevlar one for us, so it's been discussed. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if they're not bulletproof, how do you go about uh, data redundancy in like a more sort of... <laughs> So it's, not, it's not a hardware. I, I mean, it's not a, like a disk drive, I guess. So would you have to have two, three, four? Or? So, <laughs> right, so our, with data redundancies, the Tellurian ones come with this, but they have a RAID 1 drive in them that lets you automatically back up, but that has like a clone copy of your peer. So in case your uh, M2 goes bad, we are working with um, Min and Fabler with a whip that adds the ability to scry out your data from your urban, and we can encrypt that and back it up as well. So that's also, but that's, that's a data redundancy story. Not quite bulletproof, but encrypted backups are useful. Uh, you mentioned Lick, the hardware driver. Yes. Can you talk about some plans or thoughts you have about connecting peripheral devices or even IoT with yes. the planet? Okay, so let's give a background on Lick. Lick is the vein we wrote. That lets, that lets your Urbit communicate with, Earth, with locally running Earthside apps. Um, again, Murphy hit again. We had a nice demo of an air quality sensor that was running through Urbit. Um, but th that basically did exactly this. The networking here didn't let us use it. It's, uh, I got in a fight. Um, anyways, so yeah, the idea is that you can, you can create a protocol that lets you um, access and control these devices while storing your data on your Urbit directly. So uh, there's no like centralized cloud that you have to give your video feed to, your doorbells run locally, your, um, your lock. You can do a distributed Airbnb with this. There's a lot of interesting things. You, like the, the space is very interesting. Uh, I think on Monday on the side events, I'll be writing like a Linux shell live. It'll be interesting to see how it works if you guys are interested in coming. But uh, yeah, that's, that's Lick. It's uh, the newest vein. I think it's the most exciting one. What is the chipset? Is this ARM or no, Intel? No, x86. Um, I think the Aurora is i5. It might be an i7. It might be an i7. It's, it's been a while since I looked at it. And then the Callisto is a Celeron quad-core. Tellurian 2 is, I think, an i, i3 or yeah, one of the yeah. twos. I'm not sure. I have to, it's been a while since I looked at them. Yeah, so not ARM, even though our software does work on Raspberry Pis in ARM. We have, you can install it, nativeplanet.io lets you, we'll have instructions there on how to install it on any architecture. Yeah. Is the board custom? No. Um, so the Aurora is based off a of Purism uh, Libra Mini model, and the Tellurian 2 and Callisto are both based off of um, Zima, uh, Ice Panda's two boards. They have a a small, um, they have a really small like card thing that they've announced recently, and the um, was the Zima Blade and yeah, the Zima Blade and the Zima Board. They're made yeah. by a company called Ice Whale, um, and we basically take them, flash our software to them, and then add the hard drives and the Wi-Fi cards and everything else that make them our devices, and of course give them new enclosures. Florian uh, One is a recycled computer. It's a recycled government computer that we get for cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How close is this um, to the experience that Talon is offering for where they host you? Because that, that seems really accessible to like the average Facebook user. How close is this going to be? We tr so our idea is, is this is supposed to be an, uh, an appliance you buy for your family, right? So like, when you say we compare it to a toaster, the idea is you take it, you plug it in, you go through like what, five instructions? Like you log in, it has like a C to C Wi-Fi connection. So like you log into it, you put in your Wi-Fi credentials, and then you're, you can be up and running. Yeah, I mean, to kind of answer your question, I mean, we're not as plug and play as Talon. It's impossible to do that if you're kind of self-hosted. And I think that, you know, our primary target is people that have been on Orbit for a while and want to make the jump to self-hosting. Um, 
It is as easy, I am not a technical person by any means, and I troubleshoot our devices and fix our devices to some extent. No. And, uh, but. <laughs> um, but I mean, I have no problem running mine. I've run, yeah, three or four of them, almost yeah. every one of our models for months now, and yeah, have very little issue. It's, it's very easy to use. There's, there's plans, so Talon has this really interesting thing called Lore, where you can, I can invite you to it, and I think we, we, would like to, we would like to extend our boxes so we can have a similar feature. So if I want to host you on my box, I can do it. But um, as far as, as the simple as onboarding, there's, there are limitations to self-hosting, and that, that is one of them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All the way in the back, too. Oh, there's a few of them. Nice. Do you assemble every unit with your own hands? No. Um, so I, I assemble most of them with you my own hands. Most, <laughs> I do not, no. Uh, most of them are built out of his garage. The uh, Purism ones are built in their factory and shipped from them. So the, the Aurora is shipped from, uh, from, uh, from Purism's shipping, yeah. Darn. Yeah, but he does. I don't know. I'm, I'm not that meticulous. <laughs> um, you mentioned proving and mining of like blockchains and uh, collaborating with Zorp and stuff. Is the vision that you could do this on your native planet and like earn revenue by doing that or something? You should wait for Zorp's talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is yeah. me telling you to go see their talk. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, that's all the questions. Thank you guys. Yeah. It's been great. Come by, come by and pick up some manuals, they're fun. <laughs>